Spacebound presents 10 ways governments could be spying on you. And with that being said, number 10 is through your phone. Your government actually can spy on you through your mobile phone. Every country's government is collaborating with its intelligence agency to keep its country safe from potential threats, whether they be internal or external. Therefore, they see it mandatory to keep each and every person in check. Which means turning your phone on or off without you knowing. Even if I've turned my phone off. Right. The government can casually or remotely turn your mobile phone's camera and microphone on even when it's off. The NSA and other intelligence agencies have been infusing their codes into the Android operating system of phones and can turn your camera on or recording on at any time. Currently, three quarters of the world's smartphones have also been rigged. They want to own your phone instead of you. Number nine, through your computer or laptop. The government can be spying on you through your webcam or through your microphone. Moreover, every Wi-Fi password is known to Google and therefore is known to the NSA because it spies on Google. The NSA sometimes uses the man in the middle technique to disguise themselves as Google or other popular websites to gain the information they need on you. Most credit and debit cards today use magnetic strips that hold the encrypted data about the owner's bank account and personal identification number called a PIN. Number 8. Encryption slash embedding. Now, encryption was thought to be the only way you could avoid spoilage and leakage of your information and data. That is no more. In fact, it is now a way to track you. The NSA, FBI, and Microsoft have been working together for a long time with the objective to prevent blockage caused by encryption so that the government can actually easily spy on Microsoft's customer who use Skype, Hotmail, Microsoft Outlook, and other services offered by Microsoft themselves. An expert in the chips and microprocessor manufacturing field says that he wouldn't be surprised if the government didn't embed backdoors inside chips produced by Intel and AMD, two of the world's largest semiconductor manufacturing firms, giving them the ability to not only connect and gain access to the machines, but also to control them too, of course. Number seven, through black boxes. Do you see all those connectors in there? A couple dozen, maybe three dozen metal connectors. This is where the sensors are wired in from all over the car that this thing is monitoring and recording. In about 90 to 96% of all the cars, black boxes are being installed. Almost every car that has been manufactured since the start of 2014, they contain black boxes that can actually track your location via GPS. Were you on the phone, texting, what have you, but probably just a matter of time. Number six, license plate reading cameras. This vehicle is loaded with a four camera ALPR system. That's an automated license plate recognition system called Veriplate. There are license plate readers mounted on police vehicles that actually can give them access to records of millions of drivers, also take and access pictures of them in their cars. In this video, we're going to be discussing the various types of security cameras. Number five, through surveillance cameras. A former NSA software developer and security expert reports that programmers and hackers can access private as well as public security and surveillance cameras. The National Surveillance Authority is already using and controlling public cameras and using facial recognition software to track people. What they're being used for a little bit more effectively is to do things like monitor protests in places like Denver or Washington, D.C. Number four, drones. Drones are being flown over the homeland to spy on us. The head of Federal Bureau of Investigation told the Congress that currently drones are being used for domestic purposes. He also said that there are actually no rules against using drones to spy on Americans. The drones are also facial recognition software, so they can track the person and get information about the person, which is kind of scary to be honest. Now, when it comes to the feds, we know that they'll do almost anything to catch a person of interest, even if they have to do that unconstitutionally. Number three, using a stingray. It is a device that acts as a cell phone tower, and it's also functions are to pinpoint your phone's location. The US government recently learned that almost 60 states and 21 local law enforcement agencies use stingrays, also known as cell site simulators. Number two, technology companies. Governments can easily call upon technological companies to learn about anyone they want. Although it is against their policy and code of confidentiality with the customer to rat them out, but they may have no other option. And finally, number one, computerized tax and toll collectors. People who travel frequently can get an easy pass for their convenience. This will save both their time and money. All you have to do is just swipe this card at toll plazas and the transaction will occur, and that will then be recorded along with the time of the transaction. 
This record keeping is raising concern over privacy and security issues. People have also felt discomfort with the fact that every one of their transactions is being recorded. This information can be used by the police to track the whereabouts of convicted felons. Lawyers can, to their convenience, use these records in court. The only advantage of this system is that the savage of time and money it saves from having a cup holder filled with quarters. And with that being said, that concludes Spacebound's 10 Ways the Government is Spying on Us. And also, my name is Games and Wright. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And also make sure to check out a couple more awesome videos that we've done in the past. Thank you, and of yourselves, hopefully a very private day.